My hands are just too small. My fingers are way too fat to play the guitar. I hear this a lot from folks when I'm teaching guitar. In this video, I'm going to show you how to overcome this problem and play the guitar like you've always wanted. Welcome back to Relax and Learn Guitar. I'm Kevin and this is Maggie May. My wife Vicky's behind the camera. Hello. Thanks for tuning in and let's get started. So when it comes to playing the guitar with those small hands or those short, fat, stubby fingers, it's really about how you approach it and how you adjust to what you have to work with. So these tips are gonna center around things you do have control of. The first tip is to think about the type of guitar you're playing. If you can play a guitar in person and really touch it before you buy it, even better, because then you can kind of see how it's gonna feel. Uh, there's also different shapes of necks. This guitar neck is like a C shape, so it's a little more rounded to fit there. There's also U shapes, which are kind of clunkier, maybe for bigger handed people. Uh, there's also a V shape that kind of comes to a point. So it's important to kind of know and feel those before you actually buy the guitar if you can. The other thing is to think about, um, I've seen this work for a lot of folks, there are three quarter size guitars or kid size guitars. Uh, my buddy Chuck actually bought a mini Strat for his son and he plays it <laughs> probably more than his son plays it. So these three quarter size guitars typically have a smaller neck profile and it might fit your hand better. So that's something to experiment with. Um, I do like uh, teaching folks how to play the guitar on the acoustic guitar first and then move to the electric. However, the electric guitar can be a little easier to play. The necks on electric guitars are also thinner, usually, uh, depending on the guitar. So that's something to think about. The guitar you're choosing to play can make a big, big difference. Uh, there's also uh, the action on the guitar and how easy it is to fret the strings. Uh, if you'd like a much more detailed lesson on choosing a guitar and what to look for, you can check out that lesson here and we'll leave it in the uh, description below as well for you. The second tip I have for you is to pay attention to how you're holding your guitar. I like to play my guitar sitting down mostly. Um, that keeps my hand and my arm closer to my body. I have kind of more room to work with. You also want to, um, you don't want to grab your guitar like a baseball bat and, and hold it like this. Your thumb is really important, um, especially if your hands are smaller or your fingers are shorter. You want to be able, I don't know if you think they'll be able to see this. Uh, no. no? How's that? Keep going. This way? Yeah. All right. So you want to pay attention to where your thumb is because your thumb can give you some nice pressure and you can also use that, is that better? You can also use that to your advantage because if you're playing your guitar way up like this, you obviously have less room you know, for your fingers to arch and make those notes. If you're playing this way, then you have a lot more you know, room and pressure to play with and it makes fretting those chord shapes easier. We get a lot of questions about that. Yeah, a ton um, in our Relax on Guitar membership. That's one of the first things when people are having trouble that we talk about is how they're holding the guitar they already have. That's the uh, a big, big deal. And the next tip as well, which is uh, kind of the logical step, how you position your fingers. So the second tip is how you're positioning your hand. This next tip is how you're going to position your fingers. So when it comes to the position of your fingers, very important. One thing I like to uh, help people with is a little, little, well, let's do this first. The uh, thing with a guitar is there are lots of different ways to play lots of different chords, especially open chords. Um, it's not always one size fits all per se. So there's a lot of different ways to play every chord. And let's talk about the A chord, for example. The A chord looks like this. You're playing, you know, you're fretting all three of those strings inside one fret. So you'll see people play it this way, using three fingers. But if people have maybe shorter, stubbier, fatter fingers, I see people do it, it might work this way. You could use your pinky, because your pinky is smaller than your index finger. You'll see me play it like this a lot. I just bar all three strings with one finger. 
and there, then I don't have to fit all of my fingers inside that one fret. I can just Which do this. Strings? It's strings uh, four, three, and two on the second fret is the A chord. And that's just one example of hundreds of different ways you can play chords and make adjustments for the hands and fingers that you do have. You're also going to want to make sure that your fingernails are trim uh, so that you have you don't have those in the way because you want to get as much of your fingertip pressing into that string and into the fretboard. That's why I can't play. Yeah. I love my nails. Yeah. However, <laughs> like Dolly Parton. I know. She, she has them cemented. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> she can play. She's got fingernails. But, I mean, generally, you want to trim your nails. The other thing you can do is pay attention to how you're arching your fingers and one way you can kind of train yourself is the little pencil trick or pen trick. So let's say you're playing a C chord, take a pen or a pencil and you should be able to fit that pen or pencil but still be able to fret and sound out the chord. And that's just going to train you to arch your fingers. That's a big, big deal when playing, especially starting out and playing open chords, you wanna pay attention to the arch of your fingers. And now you will see my thumb kind of peeking over because my hand is a little bit larger, and uh, which is ironic that I'm doing the short hand <laughs> video and, and people might leave comments, but th these are all things that I've seen work with the hundreds of folks that I've helped learn to play the guitar. So um, with mine, you might see my thumb peeking over, but if your hand's shorter, that thumb also becomes important in combination with that arch. And the fourth tip, which is probably the most important tip of all of these, is kind of the use it or lose it principle. You really have to play and practice. And I'm not talking tons and tons of time here. Um, actually, I have a, a video here if you'd like to check it out. It's a one minute finger exercise that you could do every day that's going to go a long, long way to helping you play that guitar. So the, uh, the use it or lose it, there's a couple of things. Um, you want to stretch out your hands. Uh, this becomes even more important as we get into our 50s and 60s and beyond, um, just with arthritis and all those great fun things. But nothing real fancy. It's just a matter of, you know, doing some hand stretches, shake those hands out. Um, Keep warm. Yeah, that's yeah. a big one, if you, uh, especially with arthritis. You know, keeping your hands warm when you play is a good idea. Um, I just kind of do some simple stretches um, to get the fingers limbered up, you know, this kind of thing. So you're not going in cold. And then there's a really simple, uh, just kind of like the spider exercise, um, finger exercise. Really simple, but very effective. So you're going to basically assign one of your fingers to the fret. So your index finger is going to fret all the notes on this first fret. Your middle is gonna do the second fret. Your ring, the third. Your pinky, the fourth. And you're just going, Keeping in mind that thumb position, arching those fingers, take it nice and slow, just go all the way up the strings, and then go back down the strings. That's just a simple exercise that takes a minute a day to uh, really go a long way to help you get to the point where you're going to start fretting those notes and playing those chords and strumming along. And you can also use a capo on your guitar. Um, as you notice on a guitar, the, the further up the neck here by the nut, the frets are wider. So if you want, you can actually just you know slap a capo on your guitar on the third fret, fifth fret, whatever it is. And when you're learning chords initially starting out, you can play all those open chord shapes that A shape and all of those in this same position, the capo just becomes like the nut of the guitar and it makes these frets a little closer together and you can just kind of move the capo down your neck as you progress. So there's really no hard and fast rule and one uh, thing fixes everything. It really comes down to uh, the most important tip is using it and practicing and doing some finger exercises and warming things up. But you really just have to kind of experiment and find out what works best with you. Uh, when folks tell me that, you know, my hands are too short, my fingers are too fat, um, you can check out 
so many videos, I mean, here on YouTube or other social media where there are, you know, kids that are six, seven, eight year olds old that are just shredding it. And I watch those videos and go, how on earth is that happening? And it, you know, I try not to make it feel bad, make myself feel bad and not be where they are. But just as an example, um, adjusting to what you have is really the key to all of this. So uh, the other thing you can do is learn to play some songs in the guitar. It's a great way to learn the guitar. Check out this video next where I have three must know songs for all guitar players. Um, until next time, Vicki, Maggie, and I, thank you for your views and your support here on YouTube. We really appreciate it. And uh, remember that you're never too old to learn, and I'll see you for the next lesson. <laughs>